Look, 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 Bernard Shaw, Bernard Shaw had the foresight, he could see. But we Muslims, we have failed Islam. Wallah, we have failed. We have failed. We haven't made a start yet. We believe. We say we believe, but we have not made a start yet. This is our problem. The, the destiny is ours. Wallah, it is ours. Allah says, He has given you a deen, a way of life that is the master, super, overcome and supersede them all, bulldoze them all. Whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Communism, Judaism, every ism. Sword, sword. I'm asking, what sword? Thomas Carlyle. Thomas, Thomas Carlyle. Thomas Carlyle in 1840. He delivered a series of lectures here in the UK. In England, Thomas Carlyle, one of the greatest things of the past century. Thomas Carlyle. And he says, the sword, the sword. He said, the sword indeed. But where will you get your sword? He said, every new opinion at its beginning is precisely in the minority of one. In one man's head alone, there it dwells as yet. That he take a sword and try to propagate with that will do little for him. He said, first, you must get your sword. And how do you get your sword? Through the intellect, through reasoning. Allah says, invite all to the ways of thy Lord with wisdom. The sword of the intellect of wisdom. And with beautiful preaching. And reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. This is the sword. This is the last point that I can handle in the time given to me. Dr. Shoro said, Muhammad was not an ummi. He was a literate man. And he lied again about the history of Islam that at Hudaybiyah, Muhammad changed the words to Muhammad ibn Abdullah instead of Muhammad Rasulullah. What the Holy Prophet Muhammad did was, he is instructing the scribes when the Quraysh, the pagans, the mushriks, when they objected to Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad sallallahu he told the scribe, cut off Muhammad Rasulullah. So the disciple in love and feeling, they said, no, we can't cut it off with our own hands. We can't cut it off. We can't say that Muhammad is not Rasulullah. So now what to do? The treaty was being jeopardized. So the Holy Prophet is asking, where are these words, Muhammadur Rasulullah? So he saw the word Rasulullah and he took the pen and he marked it off. That is what he did. He didn't put Muhammad ibn Abdullah. You see, what we need for things like this, discussions like this, we need more time. We need point by point discussion. In 75 minutes, you throw 150 red herrings and say, come on, catch, 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 catch. It is not done. <laughs> I'm going to select papers from this basket which have questions on them and I'm going to read out some of the questions. It's going to be impossible to go through all the questions. So the stewards are collecting questions. I don't think we'd be able to go through those questions which you are collecting, so it's really pointless. First question to Dr. Sharosh. Jesus forgave the women caught in the act of adultery. Reference John 4 18, saying, Go and sin no more. If Jesus was part of the triune Godhood when Adam and Eve disobeyed him and the Holy Ghost, then why did Jesus not intervene, being the embodiment of love and forgive Adam? Eve and the serpent saying go and sin no more 
To answer your question, I would simply say this. The background of the story is, number one, the Jews had developed, unfortunately, two laws, one for the women and one for the men. It was to be both stoned. Jesus lovingly asked if any man had not sinned to throw the first stone at her, which meant that they were guilty too. And when they left the stones and left her, he forgave her sin. Because God is not a God of a double standard, one for women and one for men, but one and the same. Number two, as for his ability from the beginning, God had planned to, re to redeem man. And in chapter 3 of Genesis, verse 15, we are told God made a promise then to Adam and Eve that he will sin from the seed of the woman. And remember what Mr. Dirad just said. Miraculously, not the seed of man, notice, but the seed of the woman, one who will crush the serpent's head. And it was Christ Jesus of Nazareth fulfilling this prophecy who did that on the cross by dying for sinners, all sinners, not just Adam and Eve. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are of the opinion that the speaker has not answered the question, and if you're correct in your belief, then that would obviously amount to a default on the part of the speaker. So I would suggest that you refrain from uh, disturbance and expressing opinions from the floor. First question, addressed to Mr. Ahmad Didaf. Do Muslims believe in the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus, or do they believe his father was Joseph? Mr. Ahmad Didaf. I'll read out the question again. Do Muslims believe in the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus, or do they believe his father was Joseph? The question, whether we Muslims believe, the question is, is our Lord, no, we don't believe that the Lord, in, in the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus, we don't believe in the Lord Jesus, we believe in Jesus, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. Though, in the genealogy as given by Luke, he is the son of Joseph. And the words as was supposed are written in brackets, which means the Holy Ghost didn't inspire Luke to say as was supposed. These are the creations of them. In other words, this, there is still sense there that Joseph the carpenter was the actual father of Jesus. We do not believe that. We believe that he was born miraculously. And the Holy Quran testifies to that fact. In Surah Ali Ibrahim, when the good news is given to us, she says, She says, Oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? So the angel says in reply, said, Even so, Allah creates what He wills. Whenever He decrees a matter, Allah Baritala, whenever He decrees a matter, He merely says to it, be and it is. So we believe in the miraculous birth of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, that without any male intervention, He was born, and Joseph the carpenter does not have any place in the house of Islam. There's no place for Joseph the carpenter anywhere. The next question, ladies and gentlemen. 